If air travel ready is on your checklist for a new puppy, then this video is for you. A lot of people travel really regularly for both work and play, and they really want their new dog to be their companion. It is very unpleasant and stressful to put a dog in the cargo hold on an airplane. It's so much nicer to be able to carry the dog and um, into the cabin with you as a carry-on, but there are height, weight, length requirements for doing this, as well as breed requirements. And so when you are looking for a puppy, it can be really kind of daunting to figure out what dog really is going to work best for this kind of situation. So hello, I'm Annette, and I am going to do a voiceover on this topic and just put cute puppy footage on so that you don't have to look at my face. So let's talk about what size dog, what type of dog you really want to get if air travel is really important to you and you want a buddy that can travel around with you. One of the first things you have to do is eliminate all brachycephalic breeds and breed mixes from your list of candidates, which is sad because a lot of these breeds have really awesome temperaments, that kind of easygoing, non-anxious temperament that we are looking for in a travel-ready companion. But flat-faced breeds or brachycephalic breeds have breathing and body cooling problems that uh, it makes air travel really dangerous for them. In fact, they are banned on most airlines for this reason. So you will want to look at the list of brachycephalic dog breeds and make sure that you're not hoping for a puppy from one of those breeds. That includes Shih Tzus, French Bulldogs, any kind of mix they're in. I'm not sure if a Cavalier is considered brachycephalic. It might depend on the puppy or the airline. Um, but any dog that has a really extremely smushed face, it's just dangerous. Um, Boston Terriers, boy, I could probably go on with a list, but apart from that smushed face that you can't have, you also want to eliminate any dog that is really nervous. Um, that is just going to make going out in public and traveling so hard on him or her, and you don't want to have constant vomiting and you know, diarrhea problems and screeching and yelling on the plane. It's just going to make everybody miserable. So you really want to get a good, sturdy, friendly dog that loves being with you as a little bit of a Velcro dog and is safe on an airline. So there are lots of different dogs that fit into those categories. The big one is going to be size. And that's really frustrating because of all the different requirements and different airlines and every plane is even different. So there are different requirements depending on the plane within the airline. So it, it really is a very frustrating topic. I have done loads of research, particularly over the past week to look at all of the updated rules since COVID, since that has changed a lot. And it does look like you can kind of narrow it down, but there's not even a guarantee on that. So you have to look at your individual favorite airline if you travel with one or a few in particular, just to make sure that you're double checking all of this. The research that I have done, I have come up with a maximum of 20 pounds, including the carrier. That is a lot of dog to be hefting around. And so I think you really want to be absolutely maxed out at 14 or 15 pounds of dog. And then your carrier may be anywhere from two to, you know, four or five pounds. And so that's going to be your absolute max. And you can't stop just by looking at weight. You also have to look at the height and the length of the dog. And so I'll insert a little picture here so that you can see what I'm talking about but you can't have a dog that exceeds a certain height, exceeds a certain length, and your dog has to be able to fit into a carrier that goes under the seat in front of you at the foot of the seat in front of you. You have to be able to tuck that dog in there for takeoff and landing and turbulence. So your dog has to fit under there and the airline wants your dog to be able to stand up and turn around comfortably within the carrier and sit erect is what is listed on there. Now I've seen that mean that the dog's height cannot re a certain, reach a certain maximum or beyond at the shoulder. But if the dog is sitting up, their head and neck is still going to take up some height. So that is something to consider. And even if you could smush a, a big dog, a bigger dog that's like on the borderline onto a plane, that's going to be really miserable and uncomfortable. And while you might do it for one singular trip, that is not something that you're going to want to do, you know, all the time. So you really, really want to look at height and length when choosing your dog. Now under the seat in front of you, you have a space that will fit 
about a 12 inch wide by 12 inch tall and 19 inches long carrier. A soft sided carrier gives you a little more wiggle room because it can be taller out of there and kind of smooshed down to fit in that space. And of course your dog is smaller laying down than standing up. And the dog only has to be under there for takeoff, landing, and during turbulence. So a lot of these soft-sided carriers have even little pop-ups or little zippers where your dog can actually expand its size when it's not stowed away so that it can be a little taller when it stands up. So that means at a maximum, your dog can really only be about 12 inches wide by 12 inches tall and 19 inches long at a max. Um, and that 12 inches has to be, you know, at least halfway up the neck or they should be able to put their head down completely and still fit in that length of 19 inches. So you want to look at any breed. Most purebred standards are going to show you the height at the shoulders. So again, I think that it's probably best to aim for a dog that isn't any taller than 10, maybe 11 inches, absolutely maximum at the shoulder. And if you're looking at any dog that's around 14 pounds, again, I would be safe and try to pick a dog that's under 14 pounds. Um, but that's about the maximum that you could do. A lot of people like cockapoos in particular, and that is what I specialize in, of course, that I am obsessed with. And toy or mini sized cockapoos in general will fit that height and length requirement so long as you get a dog that is going to have an adult size of 14 pounds or less and also if you are looking at the shape of the dog so any breed that you look at look at the at the average shape for the dog some dogs are square meaning that they are as tall as they are long and you really want to look for a dog that is more like a rectangle you want them to be longer than they are tall because you have that kind of space so when you're looking at a puppy in a litter um, and also you might eliminate dogs that are square like poodles unless they are very, very tiny toys. When looking at puppies of mixed breeds where you could have a square or a rectangular shape, look at the puppies themselves. For example, these puppies, you can see that they are rectangular. They are longer than they are tall. That is gonna help you out. Some poos and poodle mixes are really leggy and really square in shape. So that is something that you really wanna look at. Avoid the runt in a litter. A lot of people think that, okay, you know, I need a I need a 12 pound dog and here's a litter of puppies and they're all gonna be about 16 pounds, but there's a runt in the litter. So maybe that runt is going to work for me. Avoid the runt. If the runt is significantly smaller than the other puppies, I don't mean the smallest puppy in the litter, I mean a runt that is obviously smaller than all of its litter mates that you can point to and say, wow, that dog is seriously tiny compared to its litter mates. Be very careful when choosing a runty puppy from a litter. Usually it is because there is something wrong with the puppy. In particular, there are liver conditions that can cause this size difference. Uh, most breeders that are really top-notch breeders would not release a runty puppy until at least 14, 12 to 14 weeks of age after they have done liver enzyme analysis to make sure that the runtiness isn't caused by a liver problem or a neurological problem. It is something to be really aware of. Runty puppies should be very uncommon as well. It should be sort of an anomaly. And again, a lot of really good breeders don't even advertise the runt um, until the runt is actually big enough to have really careful tests to be done to make sure that that puppy is actually healthy. Sometimes a runt is because there was a problem in utero and the puppy was not getting as much blood flow and placenta access as he or she needed and that caused the puppy to be a little bit undersized, a little bit of a preemie. And also one or two day old preemies can actually happen in dogs if there are multiple breeding dates. And so it does depend on the breeder and the type of access the males have to the females. This sort of thing is evident when the puppies, as the puppies age, that runt actually catches up in size with the other puppies. So just because a puppy is a runt or significantly smaller than the other puppies does not mean that he won't actually end up being the biggest puppy in the litter when they're about a year old. It is something that happens. So again, do not trust that you're picking on picking the runty puppy in a litter that you know is otherwise going to be oversized for you, you know. Be careful, be safe, and pick a puppy from a litter that you know most of the dogs are going to be right at the right size for you, and that way you will have the best relationship possible with your dog. So there you have it. I am actually going to be testing out some carriers 
Um, in the next couple of weeks, I ordered a few and I'm trying them out. So I will do a little update video in a little while when I'm able to uh, show what the pros and cons of these different travel carriers are. I like that some can double as car seats, which is important because a lot of times after you land, you're going to take a car somewhere. So little things like that, I want to look at them um, and assess which ones are great. So look for that. And otherwise, happy travels. And you can email me at edenorchards at gmail.com. You can find me on Facebook, WhatsApp, and my phone number for texting is also available um, on my Facebook page. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.